Right, Mark. Nice to see you, mate. You too. It's a special, special little podcast for us, as you've had a pretty nice experience just recently. Yeah. Um, I'd say pretty nice, pretty special, really. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Really, I mean, it only comes around every five years, and this one was longer because of COVID. And so, yeah, and to, as you say, have the opportunity to just be involved was, was mega. Yeah, it's pretty sick. So it was the JP McManus Pro-Am at Adair Manor. Mm. Um, two, two rounds? Two rounds, yeah, yeah. Monday, Tuesday. And, uh, and the guests get like amazingly looked after. From start to finish, yeah. From like, what, like arriving, it looked like they were arriving in helicopters. Yeah, yeah, there was a bunch of them. So there was a couple of helicopters set up on like a shuttle route from the golf course to the, to the airport, local airport, Shannon. So I think guys had the option to come in and out on each day. Because I think you could actually get there on the Friday evening um, do the practice on Saturday, Sunday, yeah. and then um, yeah, tournament yeah. Monday, Tuesday. So, but I mean, listen, I was I was really nicely looked after, and I was just you know the yeah. second, third tier of of what was going on, and really from airport to airport to airport with the three days in between, everything was taken care of. So um, no, it was a really really impressive event. Yeah, amazing. So that, so let's start, set the scene a little bit. So. Um, JP McManus program comes around every five years. Oh, I believe they invite so, yeah. all the like the best play golfers in the world yeah. to come play. Um, some amazing names, and then there's lots of like very affluent, successful people yeah. get to play with those pros. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, teams of three. Yeah, teams of three. Teams of three, and you obviously got to caddy for a mate of ours, Phil Jansen. That's right. Yeah, he kindly He's, invited um, me. A CEO at BT, and then who else in the team? So we had uh, we had Peter Jones, the Dragon. Of the Dragons, then yeah. And Stephen Myron, who's global. Yeah, the global, they have like capital FM. Exactly, and that sort of stuff. yeah, yeah. Global. But three really cool guys, right? Really, like, really nice mixture of, of people. Yeah. And, and that we had uh, day one, we had Lee Wessel as well, who was the um, uh, just the, a great guy as well. Yeah. So you so you so so you arrive. Um, so everyone arrives, and then. Does everyone know when they come in, do they know who they're going to play with? So the draw was done on, I think it was Saturday night, wasn't it? Because right. you were the first person that texted me. Media, yeah. yeah, yeah, you texted me. So I probably within a half hour window, I had sort of five or six texts come in that night um, with, you know, on yeah. different people saying different things, but screenshots are basically the tea sheet. So I think, yeah, everyone found out on Saturday night. Yeah, that's pretty, that's um, pretty cool. And yes, as you say, sets the scene. Some guys are already there. Some guys are flying in on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That, and like, um, you know, you were with Phil. So obviously Phil decided to take it seriously. You know, he's taken, because you help him out of his game all the time. And he's gone, yeah. right, I've got this big event. I better take Mark along with me. Because, you know, like everybody at, at any level, everyone wants to give the best example of themselves. Definitely. So he's, take, he's taken you along. Like, what are the AMs like being around? So, you, so on the first day you get, around, get out to the practice ground yeah, there's like major champions, you know, big players, so forth. What are the AMs like? Are they nervous? Are they chill? It's a mixture. Like everyone's, everyone was really excited. It just had a buzz about the place. Like the minute you drove in, um, everyone was buzzing to be there. And and the way, I mean, that Adair Manor is some place. Like I've been fortunate enough to travel the world and play some amazing golf courses, but that. Honestly, a second to, I've not been to Augusta, but this was the chat basically throughout the whole week is that is second only to Augusta, like the, in terms yeah. of the quality and the, the, the setup of the golf course, it was mega. So it was set up like a tour event, like a major. So the, the, it's all roped off everywhere. The range had the tour, Taylor May tour van there um, that were fitting out all the um, guests with, uh, they had a custom fit session, every single one of them, half hour session with one of the tailor-made guys, and then they'd have a full full set of clubs. So every them. amateur had a full set of clubs built for them? Yeah, yeah, well that was the, so everyone had that option available to them, whether or not everyone took that up. But so the range on the, I, I got there on a Sunday, so the range was packed on Sunday with people that were you know, going through that process, also practicing. Um, some of the pros were there who weren't playing the previous week who mm -hmm. got in early. Because yeah. obviously this for the, some of the pros was the beginning of the two week prep for the Open. So it already had a buzz when I got there. Um, so yeah, that was, as I say, it, it felt like a, a major. It was definitely like one of the high, it was like a Rolex event for sure, but it had a major feel to it, even on the practice days. So yeah, I mean, so if we're gonna re-tee up here, 
essentially the reason why we got you in to come and chat about this is you got to caddy in the same group as Tiger Woods because obviously Tiger came from we haven't mentioned his name yet which must have been obviously that was quite a moment seeing that you know that's the, you know not many people get to spend spend much time with Tiger especially in a slightly relaxed environment yep. where you probably get a bit more out of him but like is there when he arrives is everyone kind of aware of him or is everyone like there's so many kind of big players here on and off the golf course that he's just someone else He's about no it's the when tiger turns up on the real estate you you know he's there even if you can't see him even with people like peter jones around who are you know are pretty big players and you yeah know, know what i mean doing. <clears throat> you're in they're all in his world yeah. in that in that moment i mean peter uh stephen and, and and phil were all just um absolutely buzzing to play with tiger but they were nervous you know as you say they're big players in their industries they they've been around these pros before in, uh, in other capacities and this was just different. And it was funny because the, everyone saw the draw come out and as we were moving around on the Sunday and even uh, and the Monday, everyone's coming up to all three of them. And you know, everyone knows so, so, that they've so got- So they got the, to play Westwood first. Yeah, and then, Monday. So that, was that a good thing? They kind of got warmed into it? I would say definitely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think if it was flipped the other way, I think it would have been a, a ton of pressure and it might have ruined it for them. But I think they got to ease in nicely. And, and Lee was great. Lee played really nice. He's such a nice guy. Um, they had a great time. And actually, as a, as a group, they didn't play so well with, with Lee. Like it was a bit, right. bit scrappy. And, um, and, you know, the next day something, something completely different would come about. But um, so, yeah, that was... Yeah, Monday did was, it, did was anyone a good start. kind of give him a bit of banter about the fact they got a decent player the next day? About yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, I, I think Lee even came up on the first tee and said, "Oh, well, this is a bit of a letdown for you, <laughs> isn't it?" Like, or oh, I'm playing second fiddle, but you know. To, but like I was saying, like everyone at the event just would come up to these guys, even me, and and say, "Oh my God, you know what an opportunity this is. A, this is what yeah. every, you are, what everyone wanted to be, yeah. type thing." So. Yeah, there, there was Amazing. a massive, massive buzz. And then what was, uh, what was, what was, the first, what was your first sighting of Tiger? Well, I actually, I actually saw Tiger leaving the premises on Sunday in his, in his helicopter. So when I arrived, um, yeah, they were just, they literally walked into the clubhouse to the um, helicopter, which was on the range. So a very short distance and, and just watched him go off. And even then, you've you'd probably got 200 people. Follow, you're just walking him through down to the to the helicopter and, and off he goes. So I first saw him on Sunday and then, um, yeah, he had an afternoon and an afternoon draw, um, which was, we had also. So I saw him on the Monday um, in his pre uh, with his preparation, so. And did he have, I was presuming, so he had Joe LaCarva there as caddy? No, he no, he had a, his, his, his um, uh, friend Rob McNamara right. was with him. Is that him. the guy who looks after, like helps him be the eyes for his swing and that sort of stuff? Yeah, he's like yeah. the, yeah, exactly. He does yeah. a lot of travel with him, super nice guy, like, yeah. and you can just see it immediately, like, they're so similar, right. the, way, the, the way they are together. Um, and as I say, a yeah, super nice guy. Because I think it doesn't even run his foundation or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's, yeah, on the Tiger Woods Foundation, yeah, he's on, on the sheet as running that, so, um, yeah, I mean, so like obviously... CEO of the Tiger Woods Foundation and this week, Caddy. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I, and I, he travels a lot with him when it comes mm. to, to to golf. So, and I it think seems to be a bit of a thing now, doesn't it? Like when um, like Rory obviously has his best mate Harry Diamond on the bag. Yeah. Like, and it seems to be like he has him on the bag. He's a decent caddy, but like just for a social thing, really, because of yeah, yeah. all the travel they do. Probably quite nice to have someone on their pals. Yeah, I mean the, entour about. the entourage that followed most of these guys, because um, as you say, they were the, the best players in the world mm. um, at, the, at this pro am, and the entourage that follows, especially in the in the preparation, the, the guys coming overseas, in the preparation of the Open, yeah. everyone's coming. So does it, does it seem like does he, does he get a moment to himself? Is it people are kind of on him from like when he arrives at the golf course? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. nonstop. It is, but I think it, luckily in this event. There's an element of respect that, you know, it's a charity event. Everyone appreciates that they've all made the effort, especially yeah. Tiger, to come to this. And with Tiger in this, this day and age, you know, that this was the beginning of his prep for the Open. So, yeah, yeah everyone was pretty excited just to see him. But it's not, I would say it wasn't like an overwhelming, like off the course and on the range. It wasn't like an overwhelming pressure. 
on his time. I don't think it was, was really well Was he quite well happy managed. to give his time? Like, was he quite, kind of, he, was he quite relaxed he was, around people? I would say he was reasonably relaxed, but not, not much of a different tiger um, sort of around the estate, as it were. Mm -hmm. like, so he wasn't, there weren't a ton of autographs and this, that and the other. He was still, you know, tunnel vision. Was he? Um, for the most part, from what I saw. But mm -hmm. then I, I guess I saw to the range, from the range to the tee. Um, I didn't see him knocking about in the, in the um, changing rooms. So a lot of guys um, were in there and I got to chat with a few of them. Because again, that was once you were in, with, if you had the right passes, you were kind of, it was pretty open. Right. So all the amateurs, all the caddies, etc., yeah. you got to mingle. So it was, you know, it was relaxed in that sense. But Tiger wasn't, wasn't really around um, as much as the mm. other guys were, yeah. for sure. The other guys camped out, had, they were having lunches and things like that. Tiger less so. Tiger was, it was pretty businesslike. Was he, like, was he knocking about with any other of the pros? Or was it because everyone was with a team, they're a bit distant? No, no, it was it was pretty relaxed like that. So when they were when they were on course uh, or range stuff, like he was walking about a little bit and sort of chatting to guys like Justin Thomas, Jordan yeah. Spieth, etc. Like all the guys you would expect him to. Rory, he's got a really good rapport and relationship. Mm -hmm. It appears to me yeah. with Rory. Um, so yeah, no, they were. It was definitely once they were around each other and the amateurs and, and spectators weren't so so close it was kind of you could yeah. see that everyone was was pretty chill and then like so, so you know when everyone goes to warm up on the range because like obviously we get to see like all these boys when they're out on the course see that part of it but it's probably more interesting to be in the round which is nice yeah but to see them in around the range and stuff so when they when they arrived at the pro-am is it is it literally just a free-for-all like there's just like you know some geezer of 26, you know, shanking and duffing, and then next to him is Rory McIlroy just flushing eight irons. No, so this or is it like pros are down here a little bit, and the AMs are like this particular over here. one. Their range is phenomenal. It's like a massive two-tiered grass, double-ended grass range. So I'd say the, the the pros had one tier, and the amateurs had a tier right, further down. So, so they're all in the t in in a line, but they yeah. were segregated. Yeah. So yeah. pros AMs. So as you say, you've not got your. Yeah. Your guy that's randomly hitting balls next to Rory yeah. and Tiger and, and duffing it five foot because he can't feel his arms. So, oh, that'd be, you know. cause that would be quite intimidating for a lot of the guys. Yeah, uh, definitely. Bit, like, kind of mixing on the range and you know being around that sort of. Well, from what I saw, golf. obviously I, I go to the amateur to section with a warm up, and um, from what I saw, even with the because uh, the spectators were watching both pros and amateurs, because mm -hmm. as you say, there's some some pretty. Um, there's some guys, famous guys there in their own right yeah. that are not professional uh, golfers, but professional sportsmen or you know yeah. high net worth yeah. individuals. So there are people still interested in watching them. And you saw a lot of funny shots yeah. just because people aren't used to that. Yeah. And with, there's like 50,000 people That's each lot, day at this lot. event. You know, and, and they were, it was a shotgun start morning and afternoon. Uh, sorry, not shotgun. Um, it were morning and afternoon starts. Right. So you had waves of people coming in and out. So. There was so many people watching and a lot of amateurs you could see were very uncomfortable with it and yeah. some less so, some loved it. There's some definitely yeah. It is amazing it. seeing like really good sports people you know, kind of crumble in a in a situation which, you know, is not their own. Like, you know, the footballers play in front of 50, 60, 70,000 people. Yeah. Then you put them on the golf, you know, but as, as it was, there 50,000 people here, but put them in a the golf scenario and they just, they hate it by comparison. Yeah. But obviously they're just out of their comfort zone. They're not an expert add it it's it just it is an amazing situation so look, let's move it on so you've kind of seen tiger about no doubt kind of had a little eye on how he's hitting it on the range and just watch him hit a few shots and be a bit apprehensive of what's coming up and then what's the so you, do you play in the afternoon on the t on the day when you play with him yeah we did yeah one in the afternoon yeah so uh you get to chat to him before or is it like a just like go meet him on the tee no see um I mean, we could have chatted to him on the range, but I, I think at that point, Tiger doesn't know who you are, you yeah. know who he is. So, no, no real conversational introductions uh, pre first team. You didn't know who you were? I thought you would I'm, have. No. Oh, your Instagram's I, private, that's why. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very particular. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just first tee uh, where the introductions were made. Um, and they're just that, that walk down to the first tee was incredible. Like, you've got. I'd say if there were 50,000 people on, on the course, there must have been 30, 35,000 people in the walk down to the first tee and then down that first hole. For him? 
just for him. Man, yeah, and, it, and it, I'd had to walk. We didn't manage to play all the holes on the Sunday, so I went out on the Monday morning and walked for for the holes. And I went, and there were some big crowds in places, but it was pretty much fifty thousand people was evenly distributed. So it felt like there was a lot going on, but it was there was space. But yeah. it was, you know, Tiger played just a couple of tee times before us on Monday. And you just suddenly, this, this whole putting green walk down to the first tee just packed out. There were so many people. It was it, the most people I've seen at a golf tournament in, in, in one spot. One, yeah, in one yeah, spot. Yeah, not, not spread out. Yeah, yeah, not spread out. Yeah, that is amazing, isn't it? And then, and then I guess everyone's just loving him, right? There's like, there's like a, probably a pretty warm feeling towards Definitely. Tiger, right? You know, everyone's shouting out all the things you would expect and uh, all good stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, it was just, as I said, it was real buzz because that's the first time many people had seen Tiger for since yeah, true, um, yeah. the PGA. Yeah, that's right. We're not, we've, no, uh, the Masters, but, was it not? He, did he play did the PGA? He, did uh, did yeah, he, he make paid. a couple of rounds at the PGA? I don't, I'm not, uh, why? Yeah, um, yeah, because he... Let's just say the yeah. Masters. Yeah, well, I mean, a long time. Yeah. I think it was Masters, but yeah, it's a long time, right? So everyone's like, even though it's not major, I think any time anyone gets to see Tiger on a golf course, so we've seen him, we, when he was out of action, then he posted that one golf swing on social media, and then, you know, like, yeah, Facebook and everything just shut down, didn't it, yeah. pretty much, which, you know, actually get them to score. So what do they do? Do they then score in the tournaments? Like, so they the had pros their own keep ball. a score, yeah, and then two, best two from four in the prime? So it was a tech, so we all hit our tee shots. Pros, pros ball is always in the game. Mm -hmm. he's, got a, he's got a post to score. And then we took the best tee shots and played Texas from there. Right, okay. And then it was the best two. So obviously the pros ball is always in play. So essentially it's, yeah. it's one of the amateurs more okay. often than not. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a good format, like kept everything moving. And, yeah, and but we kept it quite social, we were kind of standing together a little bit Yeah, as well. to a point. I mean, it was tricky. It was tricky with Tiger because he was in a cart. Right. So Tiger kind of could. So he's riding the cart, so he's still not, not in the best of shape. No. and then hobbling about a little bit. I mean, he, was he just protecting himself? I think he was protecting himself and knowing what was to come. Mm -hmm. um, although he did, he looked, he was moving pretty gingerly. Was he? Um, the whole time I was, I saw him throughout the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And what was his, what was his game like? Because I, I got, I got to see him a little bit at St Andrews, but what was it like pre that? I mean, it looked pretty good to me when I. His range warm up was pure. Was it? Um, I spent a bit of time because the short game area is right next to, he was last man on the on the range. So I, I could see both, I, would, yeah. I could do my job and, and keep yeah. an eye on what he was You just like looking at Tiger and being like, yeah. He's, yeah, exactly, like he's Phil. cleaning the club. Like, another yeah. club, mate. Yeah, just yeah. To, that, to that hole. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, he was swinging it lovely on the range, like he was moving it around both ways, as you would expect. He likes to hit all the shots. Mm -hmm. So he was doing that, working his way up through the bag, looked look good. Um, and then on the golf course, um, he didn't play so well on the Monday. Obviously, right. I didn't see too much of that, but he shot 73, one over, I think it was, when he played with us. And um, what were the other guys kind of shooting? What was the leading score? Uh, Xander won it with eight under. Right, over I two think, rounds. Over two rounds. Right. So it wasn't like, a, I mean, that's a serious yeah. golf course, playing at seven, seven and a half course, yeah. and no run. And, yeah, and soft. It, it's, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a big golf course, so. Um, but yeah, so he shot one over. And it was pretty solid, I'd have to say. Like mm. he moved again, was moving the ball both ways, uh, messing around with his trajectory a little bit. Um, he actually didn't the the early phase of of the the round. He didn't putt so good. Like he, I don't know, he didn't quite have the pace of the greens. Didn't yeah. look like he quite um, had it. But um, yeah, in general, his game looked really tidy. Yeah. He hit some really nice short game shots. So just real quick, so you get so you get down to the first tee. It's like you know, you said like thirty odd thousand people. Yeah, it's all bedlam. There. Um, are they pretty tight in? Because obviously for the AMs, that'd be quite a nerve wracking situation. To be fair, that they, they a created a bit of space. Give a bit around, of space. Around the first and the tenth tee, there was a bit of space. And did he tee off first or did the AMs go first? He teed off first, yeah, because right. they made all the pros play back. Different tees, right? And yeah, the ants play. And what was his forward. first tee shot? Because it must have been quite a bit of anticipation about where his first tee shot was going to go. Yeah, he melted it. He drove the ball actually, by all accounts, both days pretty well. He definitely drove it well when we played with him, and um, he just melted it straight down the middle of yeah. the fairway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, well, he's not always been a great first tee shot player, but he's obviously, no. he's obviously figured it out, and he's. 
later he, part of his career. <laughs> he was he it was interesting because Tiger at the at the beginning of the round versus Tiger at the end, two different people. He was very, very much in, in his own world on that first tee. He did all the things that he should do. He shook everyone's hand, yeah. or the players anyway. Um, but he was very much in his own hand? space. Well, you didn't no, go for one. No one. I, yeah. I, I wasn't at that point. Listen, I'm, I'm there for Phil. I'm, yeah. I'm making sure that, because obviously it's a big moment for him. Yeah. Um, I'm just making sure that he's where he needs to be yeah. to do what he can do. And, um, so It's not time to be a fanboy just yet. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, t Tiger was very much in his own space. How you would, how you've seen it on TV at the, on the mm. first tee of majors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. it was just him, Rob. He did his pictures and his shaking of hands, and yeah. that, that was it. And then, so, so he kind of gets into it for a few holes, does he? So, he, what he pars the first couple of holes? Uh, yeah. Drop a shot. Did he pick up a shot. He dropped a shot on the third, I think, but. He was he was pretty solid all the way around. I think he he bogeyed the last. He went for the 18 in 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 two. Didn't make it. Bogeyed the last. And mm -hmm. I think that was the thing that pushed him over. But yeah. it, it was. I think there were two or three birdies in there and and yeah. a few others uh, along the so, way. So talking about those birdies, we see I saw a, a few little vids of yeah. um have been calling you out for to read putts and on a few holes. And I'm pretty sure I definitely saw it. It made one of them from about 15, 18 feet. Yeah, that was, was the that one, like, did that take, was the one did, on 16. Did he take you by the blue? Did it come out of the blue? Had you been chatting so, to him, warm, warming up to that point? Had you it, been giving him a couple of good reads to fill? Why so did that come about? I think the... Um, so I, I sort of stayed back for the first couple of holes. Like, I introduced myself to him on the, on the first fairway while were we were just waiting. That? No, no. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. I was, I was very calm about the whole thing because yeah. obviously it's, you know, I'm there. I'm second tier or third tier, whatever you you know, I'm fodder really to, in comparison to what else is going on. And I, I was, I was just, I felt very lucky to be in that situation mm -hmm. and I was excited, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't nervous or anxious about it. Um, so yeah, I just went up to it. I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to leave it too long because yeah. then you just, Gets you won't get, you yeah. won't get any <laughs> acknowledgement at all. So I just said, Look, I, you know, Mark, and he was like, yeah, Tiger. And it was, um, again, a couple so of So he did actually give you his name? Yeah, he, he did. did he, that, yeah. He, he just made sure that I knew. <laughs> um, oh, I was pretty casual. Maybe he thought yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he sort of warmed up as we went along uh, to everyone, really. Um, as I said, it was quite hard at the beginning because the cart, he was in the cart, Rob yeah. was in the cart with him, and he sort of just drove, yeah. hits the shot, drove off, etc., etc. So you don't have that moment where you can just walk over and chat. But yeah, in terms of... We got chatting, as you say, he saw what I was doing with Phil, and we didn't really get chatting too much uh, earlier than like the seventh or eighth hole. And then um, on nine, I, uh, on, on nine green, I just, uh, we were walking off the, the, um, the green together and he, he had his putter and I just said to him, that Tiger, do you mind if I, um, is, is, is that the one you won, you know, yeah. your majors with? He's like, is that the one? Because I know yeah. you've got a few. He's like, yeah. It's like, do you mind if I do? He's like, absolutely, yeah. And I just yeah. got it in my hand, and I was just like, well, first of all, this is an absolute dream. Yeah, don't, you know, don't not drop many it on people, the car, Yeah, <laughs> not many people get get the opportunity to have this in your hands, like the the real one. Is the grip like new grip? Is it worn out? No, it's worn out. And I tell you, the first shiny. thing that I know, sh shiny, and the first thing I know, well, and really thin. Yeah. Really, for someone it's like that, like I mean, it, it? yes, yeah, the, the, the pin grip one. with a slight yeah, curve. The original to it. sort of. You know, and I guess yeah, it's an answer. Yeah, really old school. Really old school. Super thin. Yeah. It's the first thing I notice, and super light. Oh, really? Like, yeah. I mean, I putt with a slightly heavier putter, but yeah. we're not. To, we're talking like ten grams more, like three sixty yeah. ish, or. But this just felt so light to me. Really? Like in my hands, this would have won as yeah. many majors as I've already won, which is absolutely <laughs> nothing. So, um, no, it was. So that was that was pretty cool. And then <clears throat> on ten green. We were, Phil and Tiger's balls were pretty much right next to each other and I, Phil, were, Phil was going first and I was reading it and he was sort of looking at it as well. And I, I verbalised out loud like yeah. to Phil and, and Tiger was like, oh really? And I was like, yeah. And so Phil hit it, hit a good part. And he's like, oh yeah, you're, you're right. I would have read it this. And so anyway, he hits it on that line. And, and um, as he hit it, it he, he hit it, missed it left, I think. And as he hit it, he said, I pulled it. And then, so he missed it just on the high side, yeah. but he came back to me and, he, and then it was really interesting because he opened up to me and he said, I've been watching, 
I've been watching your reads and things like that, and uh, you could, whatever, you, you seem to read a good green. And he said, I, I read it differently because I hook my putts. And I was like, what? Yeah. Just, I didn't know this. I'm sure this is common knowledge to everyone. But yeah. he's like, yeah, I, I hook my putts. I've always hooked my yeah. putts. So I have to read the green differently. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, so that's really interesting. And, and, and I, I had a brief chat about, you know, that and how. Which is funny, isn't it? Because like, logically and scientifically, like, that doesn't really make sense to hook a putt. Does he mean, like, is he talking about, is he pulling it? Or is he, because essentially, like, the, the, a putt won't have side spin on it because as soon as it grabs, it goes end over end. But then the other part is you go, like, yeah, but he's Tiger and he mm. holds putt, so, you this know, who's anyone to argue? Exactly, and I didn't want to go too much into, well, hang okay, on, no, what do you, you want to talk nonsense, me through mate. the tech on that, <laughs> you know, the, the technical side of that. Sounds but, like BS. So, yeah, I just listened to, to what he had to say and he told me a few stories about other people that he feels like hooks the putts, etc. And then um, we go on to 11. He hits a really nice shot into, um, into 11 and he's the, the ball that we take because um, on the par threes, obviously, you, it takes us, you, you just take the closest yeah. one. So, he, he, again, he sort of gets the ball and he's like, from now on, I don't want anyone else reading, my, uh, reading the greens but Mark. I was just like, this is Whoa. like, he calls me out in Big front of every, that. everyone. Yeah, and I'm just like, okay, so read the green again. And I said, I said to him, am I, am I basing this reads knowing, on knowing what I know now? Yeah. And he said, yeah, if you would. So yeah. knowing that, I, that he, he hooks, he thinks he yeah. hooks parts. So I've slightly under, under read, left to right break, slightly under read it. And I've given him a point. Like there's a perfect little patch on the, on the green. Yeah. Anyway, he, he hits the part, ends up missing it, and you can see that it misses it on the right, and he's like, you're bang, bang on. So yeah. it's like, it's a couple, this yeah. just starts Building to get up. a bit of momentum, it's yeah. in front of everyone, and so, yeah. you know, for me, my hat, my head, I'm Pretty just, cool to be able to, like, you know, someone like him, who you know is so in tune with what he does, that he actually does, like, he would hit parts or hit them a certain way, knowing that like, he knows if he's right or wrong. Right, well, I'd imagine normally, right? No, I'd, yeah. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd be being in the same group, and you, you get out with somebody, you go, oh, some, it's a cup outside the right. And then they, yeah. they clearly pull it, and it goes left, and they go, oh, it was the wrong read. You're like, no, you've pulled that miles. Right. Yeah, and, and obviously I've had, a, yeah. I've had an awful lot of that. Um, but yeah, his, and his feedback was instant. It, almost before it had reached that point, that yeah. I, he, oh, he knew. He'd, he'd say, he'd say, no, I've, I've left that out there, or I've not hit the spot. Because you hear that loads of them, don't you? When you, when you listen to any stuff that comes from like club builders with him. It's like he likes to hit certain windows and this straight away as, as it comes off, he's like, no, it's that yeah. six iron takes off in the wrong window. Yeah. Like, like, as the ball's half up, it's flight. He's like, no, that doesn't work, but it does. And he's like mega intuitive over most people, especially these days, but you, they wait for the outcome. So if the ball goes in or not, or you know, does the, what's the numbers on the track man? How do they come out where it sounds like He's the same with putting as he is with his fitting his, you know, his irons to his, yeah. his shafts and so forth. Like his still feel and he, he's obviously really, really intuitive in tune with how the balls come off or yeah. so forth. Yeah, yeah, and across uh, across the board as well, you could see that he was very intuitive with everything that he was doing. He was he was quick to he was quick to make a decision and pull the trigger as well with something was that he? I really, really, um, really liked. And we spoke the other week on the podcast about that's something I love about. Cam Smith, he, yeah. he just won the Open. So, so no real deliberation, it's just like, make a decision. Yeah, well he seemed to, at times he deliberated a little bit, but um, once he'd made that decision, bang, it's just done. just pulled yeah. the trigger, which was really cool. So we'll, so we'll get back on the golf stuff, but was there any like, did he come out of any non-golf chat on the way round? Did anybody kind of give him any questions or was he, was he quite engaging with the guys, not engaging with the guys? As, as the round went on, like, as I would, would say... Would he have even known who, the, who, he played, who he was playing with? Do you know what they did? I would, I would say that um, I wasn't there for all the conversations that broke away. Yeah. I would say that he made the effort to have that conversation yeah. with everyone. I wonder if and he watches that like, Dragon's Den. Well, exactly. It was funny because Peter Jones flight. was getting a, getting a lot of the a lot more crowd um, interaction right. than let's say Phil or Stephen was, um, and that was funny because he was playing up to that and he, he was he was very good with them. So I, I guess Tiger would have known in that environment that yeah. you know these guys were worth at least having that conversation with, with somebody. Yeah. So I, I think he was aware that you know they they were very successful in their own right. Yeah. And how did, the, how did the guys play? 
How did Phil play? Do you know what? They played really well. All, all three of them. They, they, they were, I was so happy for them yeah. um, because they, they really got the best out of themselves, I think, in that environment. Because mm -hmm. the crowds didn't, that, that, it wasn't just a case that there were 35,000 people on, on the whole one. I, I'd say the, that most of those people followed the whole way around. There were some lulls where, but you're still talking about both sides of the fairway. Essentially, everyone was just with that group. Just yeah, moving just around meandering the along like they might. There was yeah. some other people were going to see Rory and and, and stuff like that. But um, I, I was I was really proud of Phil because I think it, I've worked for him uh, for a long time, and um, getting to getting him to a position where he's in in that kind of moment. It doesn't matter. Like mm. he's obviously very good at what he does, yeah. but in that moment, he's a fish out of water, and and yeah. he he did so well. And I think the same could be said with the other two guys as yeah. well. And they they had such a it just worked perfectly for them. Like everything as it went, it, Tiger eased up, everyone else eased up. But the, in the early phase, they all played quite nicely. I mean, we birdied the first. I think it was Peter Jones who birdied the first, maybe with his own ball. Um, it just worked so yeah, well for good. them, and it, it was just such a nice. I don't know whether the environment, the way it all played out, made it, it made Tiger mm. sort of interact more as as the day went on. But it it just worked out well for everyone. And then, as we'll see in some of the vids, as it got towards the end, there was a nice little moment when um, when Tiger does whole whole like a I suppose like a 15, 18 foot putt. Yeah, and he gives it the little point at you. That was pretty cool, that bit. Yeah, do you know what? I'm not going to lie. That was. Uh, that must be a quite a nice moment done. in your life. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You know, being a professional golfer yourself, still in a moment to get to have an interaction with the greatest golfer ever in an actual golfing situation. Like, yeah. what, you know, adding to his golfing life. Okay, it's only 15, 18 foot part in the J. Pittman Most Pro Am. Yeah. But you still play the part and him knocking the putt in. Yeah, and, and he acknowledged it. Like 16, that was on 16. 16 was kind of the signature hole. The, the behind you is the the beautiful manor, the Adair Manor, which is the hotel. Um, great hole. It's going to be a great hole in the Ryder Cup. Mm -hmm. That that green's got to be like a. It feels like almost 200 yards long, and it's yeah. it's a sort of 45 degree angle across the water. So it's a mega hole, and there's a an amphitheatre like a, a hill where. Uh, so many people. I mean, that in the Ryder Cup, and even in that event there, there, there must have been ten thousand people on the hill. Mm -hmm. So the scene was set perfectly. And, and again, he calls. I'd originally gone to get Phil's ball, which had just run over there, or was just sitting on the back of the green. And um, we took Tiger's tee shot. Um, and as he's put, marking it down, I'm walking off. My back's to everyone. I'm the, and he, again, like he hadn't done it for a couple of holes, and he calls. He's, he's like, "Where's Mark?" And I'm just like, I'm walking up and yeah. I turn around and he's like, you know, gets me to read it. And everyone's just standing with Tiger and I'm doing the, full, you know, I'm looking yeah. at it because this is kind of like everyone's heard it. And, and I know that this is more than likely going to be on TV because the, the hole is the signature hole is a yeah. massive amphitheater going on. Um, so, yeah, give it the read and it was quite obvious, picked a point, you know, everybody's, it wasn't one where you sort of shied it or yeah. I didn't shy away from it and give a kind of a, yeah, I think, I it's, think straight, it's here, firm you know, straight. <laughs> pretty much bang like that. And he just nods his head and says, yeah, no, I've, I've got it, like, and, you know, as you say, bangs it in and, and, he, and just gives it the, point. the point at, at me. And I, again, I'm, I'm set back. I'm not part of the yeah. group. I, I've, I've stepped away. It's I'm, yeah. I'm done. This is your, your moment type thing. And as you say, for me, like, uh, it chokes me up a little bit now. <laughs> talking about it, like, that's a big moment. Like, yeah, cool, not that. many people, I, you know, I never thought I'd get to experience something like that. Yeah. As you said, the greatest player in the world, you know, yeah. acknowledge me for, you know, yeah, what I really did cool. in that moment in time. Yeah. Like, I will never forget that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, then, and as you're walking to the next tee, do you like to say to Phil, like, no, I told you I was a good great reader. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's funny. Phil come up to me, and he, he uh, outside of because then Tiger come back and also give it, give everyone a fist pump, and then give me one individually, and then Phil sort of come up to me and just again, it's it's a nice moment between the two of and us Phil's because quite good he's, like that, isn't he? he's he's quite he, aware of he that acknowledged me in that moment yeah. as well for and yeah. you know it's, it's just that was yeah. that was a mega moment for yeah. me. That was the standout for the whole for the whole day for the whole yeah. week. Yeah, that's yeah in, in golfing life, that's pretty cool. Isn't yeah. It? So what were his uh, what was his best shot and his worst shot? Did he hit any shots where you just thought, God, you know that's he, good? Or he, were they all just decent shots? They were all pretty decent shots. I wouldn't say he hit any, 
any terrible shots. I, I think for me, he hit a pitch shot on 13. Uh, he left himself in a trap and didn't, didn't quite, uh, actually probably the worst shot, um, the best shot followed the worst shot. He hit, hit a fairway trap on uh, and, and sort of dunched it out. Terrible word to use for the yeah. greatest player in the world. But, um, the best and then he hits a lovely, lovely, lovely pit. I mean, it, it's set up beautifully, slightly downhill, back left pin. You know, again, people surrounding the green. And I said to Phil, actually, I said, he will absolutely like, keep an eye on this because yeah. he, he will love this shot. It was just one of those shots that we all, yeah, you, you look at it and just think, yeah, this is perfect yardage, perfect yeah. conditions. I can send it in mid, mid trajectory. It's going to and stop. And he just, he did it. And it was, and I was probably 20 yards back watching the whole thing yeah. and a perfect view. And that for me, even though it's a, sh a short shot, he just executed it perfectly. Yeah, there's a, there are the odd, the odd shot. He just, you know, I guess you've watched him over the years, and there's like a kind of comfortable shot in a certain situation, which you know, like he's going to play this, and the crowd are going to love this. Yeah, like you just know, yeah, and yeah. he knows it as well. And he's it, rebel, isn't it? Again, it was just great that you know I was in a position where I was, you know, standing literally twenty yards mm. away and watched it unfold. Yeah. It was, it was that, that was that for me was the best shot. So like you, you got to hang out with him for a, a day and, and see him on the golf course, and you know, a couple of years after his injury, what do you reckon we'll see? Do you reckon we'll see more of him playing, competing in the future, or does it look a little bit sketchy? It's hard for me. Like if if I'm if I'm really honest, I think that he's going to struggle. Um, he's obviously done an amazing job, just to, and I have to say, amazing job to get to this point where he's just even able to do what he did at the. Did Masters. he talk about his injury at all? Not re we we spoke a little bit about it, mm. and he spoke about how hard you know it was yeah. to get to this position. Um, but yeah, for, he didn't. He certainly didn't harp on about it. It wasn't something yeah. that he would bring up and yeah. reference as a as yeah. oh, I'm, and he never complained about it. It's not not yeah. one moment did he complain about his condition on the golf course or yeah. anything like that. He would reference how he's in the buggy because he's trying to you know yeah, keep prep. himself yeah. fresh for what's coming up. But yeah, no, he was. But for me, I, I I'm not sure it can get too much better. Yeah. Um, and I was, I said in the podcast the other week, I was amazed actually in his preparation that followed um, for the Open, the amount of walking yeah, he, he, did he, lot, he? Yeah. he did. And then even watching him, I know it's flat as, uh, um, at the Open at St Andrews, but even then, like he moved, he was moving so much better. Yeah. So much better. Um, it doesn't look like it's affected his, his swing, it looks like he's swinging it as good as ever. Yeah. Don't know if it's as far, obviously not as fast as heyday, but he's like it's really pretty good. Yeah. Well, I sent you that slow mo, didn't I? Yeah. From and and from the range, and it just looks yeah, it's on good, the yeah. money, yeah. Like, right on it. Yeah, and his ball, to, you know, he's, he's keeping his speeds up. Yeah. He, you know, obviously it's not where he's used How to. How far do you reckon he was hitting it off the tee? Um, I was just under the three hundreds mark. Yeah, it was quite like, soft. Yeah, yeah. It was it was soft, and and he had. He had more, like so. You could see he towards the back end of the the day, he was giving it a little more. Right. Yeah. He definitely sort of moved in, as yeah, the day went the on. He had more mobility, more movement, yeah. uh, for sure. And uh, and I don't know whether because there was talk that he wasn't going to play on on the on the Tuesday mm. that he was struggling a little bit, and he definitely looked like he was uncomfortable at the beginning. Yeah. I don't know whether that was why he was so focused. Yeah. It's because he maybe was fighting the pain, and and as the round went on, that eased off. Those bits. And then did he? Um, a couple of questions, really. Did he like? Did he chat about any other stuff going on in golf? Did he chat about any of the live stuff, or did he bring up any other? Did you anyone anyone touch on any other subjects? with him or is it all quite nice and you know just enjoying the day yeah I think it was more along those lines I don't think anyone pushed him too hard on Liv I think there were a few sort of like little one-liner jokes yeah. like that went along with it yeah but no, I don't think anyone pushed too hard well, like on, digs, an, on an opinion there were, there were digs at Liv well kind of like so I'd heard that there was a couple that were digs and dinner from a couple of the big oh, players towards some live players, that sort of stuff, which yeah, yeah there was definitely the banter went a bit a bit stronger than it probably should have done. Well, maybe, maybe so, yeah. And I think even Ty Tiger did a little um, speech in the um, in the evening, and I think he referenced something a lot of it. But again, really? it was it was like a one liner. It was yeah. sort of a bit a bit sneaky, but the tongue in cheek. 
No, I think for the most part, people had their conversations with Tiger like individually. There wasn't yeah. really necessarily group group stuff yeah, uh, yeah. unless there were weights on the tee, and then it was quite again, it was pretty casual. It would be about there were two, the two places where we stopped. Actually, there were like food stalls, mm -hmm. so it was more about like oh, you know. Was he was he boozing on the course or not that? No, any beers no, on the course? No, no, no boozing, but he went no. straight at, to, at both both the burger place and the sausage place. He was straight there. Was he? Yeah, yeah. He was first in line, and, and he had a, had a nice big burger on fifth tea, uh, fifth or sixth tee, wherever it was. Ketchup, brown sauce, any. Uh, I did. To be honest, I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't right on top of that <laughs> order. But he had. A, he threw back. Uh, I think it was three sausages on the fifteenth tee did while he? we were waiting there. as a drivable par four. Mm. Yeah, he he wasn't afraid to throw okay. back a few of them. So, so he's so. not a vegan then. No, no, far I wouldn't from say it. so. So so, I presume the best moment was the reading the putt, getting the little point, getting the little acknowledgement. Yeah, I'd was say that the best moment, or was the whole experience the best moment? The whole experience was great. Like I would definitely say that it, that 18 holes, it just got better and better as it went on. It was for me and my interaction with Tiger was slow to start, mm. but that's that was probably natural, more right? more my my doing because it, I'm there for the yeah. other. You know, yeah. I'm working. It's not my thing. I'm very lucky to yeah. be in this scenario, but it's not about. It's very much not yeah. about me. I was fortunate that the, everything went so so nicely that maybe I got got my my opportunity and and it, but yeah so that one individual moment on 16 was probably the highlight but it was just like that back nine I'll remember forever because it 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 grew to that point like it yeah. was just nice it, it was it was an organic sort of like genuine yeah. um, um, sort of the conversations we were having etc etc yeah, so it, it wasn't staged it just that, that's no the way no it ended up. and it, it was I, I, I'll say it was two-way because I can. He, yeah. may, he may say otherwise. If you, you were to ask him, you probably would remember. But it just felt like if I said something, he would respond with a genuine answer and yeah. then ask something else. It, yeah. it, it so he's a nice nicely. guy, personable. He was happy to chat to people. He's open. He wasn't shut off like it, no. like it may have been in the past. No, not... He's not. open to taking information. He well, was coachable. He, he, very much so, yeah. And, and again, listen, don't forget... He he opened the door for that. I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't. Um, yeah. I at no point forced that's anything. That's not. Yeah. Some some players are, are known to have been very much the opposite. Yeah. Didn't want to tell you what they're going to do and give it all the big one. Yeah. But it sounds like he was quite open to be like, okay, you, you give me the read and you know, see we go. If it was maybe the uh, 17th hole of the Open Championship, he may have taken a bit more um, authority on it. But it was quite nice that he was more than happy to go like, yeah, you tell me what to do and I'll give it a go. Yeah. 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 Which is pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was just great. And he's obviously, you know, I, I presume he's taking your number in case Joe LeCarver can't make it one week. Well, listen, I mean, <laughs> yeah. some, things, some cars you've got to keep close to your chest. Yeah. So. Well, he, can, <laughs> he can tweet you or whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's cool. Well, was there anything else? Was there anything else than, that you want to share? I would, just say, I would just say that that is such a fantastic, I would just, such a fantastic event. So the amount of money, I think they raised around 130 million pounds for, ch for charity. Did they really? And there is such a great fit, that whole, uh, the volunteers and mm, the whole area. Sorry? You, don't, you don't hear that bit that they no, raise that much you, money. No, you don't. Because you hear about, you know, they all get looked after and they get, you know, get watches as, as gifts and amazing tailor-made clubs and stuff. But you don't also realise that all those super successful people actually... 130 million what a number that is and and it was uh, the That's volunteers awesome. like the the shuttle drivers and the, uh, all sorts of people just every there was a buzz about what this event does for mm. the local people yeah um so this this is a this is a big deal for ireland and a big deal I, I don't know whether they just keep whether they spread the spread the wealth or not but to that local area yeah. it was mega and if you think about it bringing that type of field to a yeah. small town in Ireland Amazing. is is incredible. So there was a real good feel about that. And I wonder how much how much Tiger is a part of that. Like, as in, like, I think you know, does does is the event you know fifty percent, seventy percent more lucrative or better because because Tiger Woods is there? It's I, a bit a, a massive amount, I would imagine. I would say so, and I, I'd say that Tiger um, Mark O'Meara bought Tiger over years and years ago because yeah. he had a good relationship. So with JP. Thing, when, when he used to come over to the uh, Dubai Desert Classic. I used to like chat to Adrian you know, when I was part of golf in Dubai. He used to say that whenever they brought Tiger over, they always like brought a mate along or yeah. got got a mate to come with him. So one year that Mark O'Meara couldn't make it, they brought they paid for Charles Barkley to come because if, if Charles Barkley came, 
then Tiger would come in and he would relax and they'd get more out of him. Yeah. And that was always the case with like Marco Mira, because when Marco Mira won the Dubai Desert Classic, they were a bit like, oh, he wasn't supposed to win, he's supposed to just be hand-holding for Tiger, and yeah. he ended up winning the whole thing, sort of thing. But yeah, it's interesting, like all the little things they do to keep him happy, but I mean, if that's a small price you've got to pay to get all that out of it, it's amazing. Yeah, no, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. And, and one, another thing I would say is that golf course, Adair Manor, and, and the, the Manor House Hotel, it, uh, it's just incredible. Mm. Like, honestly, that is the best golf course I've really? ever been to. It's, it is the European Augusta for yeah. sure. And if all the players um, are saying that is second to only the Augusta, then, yeah. I mean, that says it all, Amazing. doesn't it? But that that's is a it. place to go to if ever anyone gets the chance. Yeah, that's, that's it's worth it. One. Yeah. And I think it's very accessible as well, mm. from what I hear. You just got to pay a, pay a coin. I, in, I in think you go. I think it's cool. No, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you. I'm Look it up online. Yeah, exactly. Mate, it's fascinating uh, hearing about uh, your experience with Tiger. Sounds like he was a top lad and um, you helped him on his journey to uh, one shot better than he would have shot had he read the putt for himself. And I really hope that he gives you, um, gives you a call if Joe can't make it one week. Listen, fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see.